Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we're talking about the sales decline of the Chevy Silverado and the GMC Sierra. I want to answer two major questions in today's video. Why are the sales declining with both of these pickup trucks? And more importantly, why have the declines not been as drastic as what we've seen with Ford and Ram? Because I find that part of it absolutely fascinating. Before we get in this video, though, I do need to give a shout out and thank you to the Lurch Miller Chevy here in Provo. Now, they do not endorse or approve of this video whatsoever. I am literally just on their lot filming this video without any permission whatsoever, but since I am on their lot, I do want to include a link to their website in the description down below so you can check out what they have currently. They obviously have, well, quite a few Silverados available for sale like most Chevy dealers do right now. And so if you're looking for a Chevy Silverado, reach out to them. And then as always, if you're going to save time and money the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. Let's get into it. Now I'm gonna start things off by going over Ram and Ford's sales figures over the last few years to put everything into perspective for GMC and, well, Chevy as well with the trucks. So with Ford, back in 2018, they sold over 900,000 F-Series pickup trucks. 2019 was just under 900,000. 2020, they took a big hit. They sold less than 800,000. 2021, just over 700,000. In 2022, they sold 650,000 trucks. So Ford has been on a steep decline with sales with their F-Series pickup trucks over the last few years. Now, if we dive back to 2018 with Ram sales, it's pretty fascinating. In 2018, Ram sold 597,000 vehicles. In 2019, they sold over 700,000 vehicles, so they had a huge increase. 2020, 624,000. 2021, 647,000. So they went down in 2020, but then they went back up in 2021. And then in 2022, they went down a massive amount, 545,000 vehicles. Now, something to mention, this is Ram's total sales. Ram also sells the ProMaster van, which usually accounts for about 40 to 50,000 units per year. And so in 2022, Ram didn't sell 544,000. 545,000 trucks. They probably sold closer to like 490, maybe 500,000 trucks. And so now let's finally get into Chevy's sales figures. So 2018 saw 585,000 sales with the Silverado. 2019, 575,000. 2020, they saw a big increase. They sold almost 600,000 Silverados. 2021, 529,000 and then 2022 a small decline to 520,000 pickup trucks and then if we dive over to GMC's numbers with the Sierra it's a similar story to the Silverado except it's actually a little bit more positive so 2018 saw 219,000 trucks sold 2019 232,000 so they increased 2020 253,000 and then 2021 saw a slight decline to 248,000 and then 2022 saw another slight decline to 241,000 so GMC has also seen an increase in volume just like Chevy has and they've seen a small decrease in volume over the last couple of years just like Chevy but unlike Ford and Ram which have seen much larger decreases in sales volume. So based on the data that we just went over this shows that GM is now the number one truck maker here in the US and I know some people argue at that point and say no GMC and Chevy they're not the same brand but it's like okay here's the deal they're the same manufacturer the pickup trucks are built on the same platform they have the same powertrains like Yes, the sheet metal on the outside is a little bit different. Yes, there's some differences with the interiors, but guess what? There's some differences with the sheet metal and interiors with like a Ford F-150 Platinum or F-150 Raptor compared to an F-150 XL, for example. And so like, I think that combining the sales figures is completely justifiable. And so if you combine the sales figures with Chevy and GMC, then you can see that, well, they sell way more pickup trucks than Ford and Ram. And like I said earlier in the video, their sales figures haven't declined as much as Ford and Rams. And again, the figures I just went over completely support that. So let's take a look at a few Silverados and try to explain why the sales figures are declining. And then also again, why they're not declining as much as Ford and Ram. So we're going to start things off by looking at a more entry-level truck that Chevy currently sells. Now this custom package is, again, more of like a baseline package. You've got cloth seats. However, it's got cool elements like these blacked out wheels here. And, you know, overall, I think it's pretty good looking. Oh, and the window sticker says that this particular truck happens to have the 274 cylinder. Anyways, total MSRP on this truck, $50,765. Now the next truck we'll quickly look at is this Silverado LT. Now you can see the LT has slightly nicer lights compared to that custom package and it has a little bit more with the interior, especially with the dash. This has the new digital gauge cluster, whereas the custom doesn't have that. Um, but you do pay a price for that. Now this one has the 5.3 V8, which is obviously a really popular engine. Uh, this sticker is for $60,000, so about $10,000 more. Man, these trucks are like all in the line perfectly. So the next one is the LTZ. 
Now the big thing with the LTZ is it really upgrades the interior so you have like leather seats, they're heated and cooled, um, you obviously get the new dash and all that kind of stuff just like the LT. Um, but again this does come at a cost so this has the same engine as that LT and this one stickers for $64,000. Now we're not gonna take a full look at this truck, but this is another engine that Chevy has. So we went over the 274 cylinder, we also went over the 5.3 V8. We also have this Duramax, and the Duramax is actually pretty affordable. On this particular truck, this looks like an RST, 995 bucks. Now one truck that is currently not here is a High Country half ton. Now that would sticker for probably about $70,000 is what I've usually seen those as equipped. And then of course we have Chevy's HD trucks. Now this first silver one that you guys saw in the shot is an LT and this one has the 6.6 gas engine uh, and this one actually stickers for $60,000. Now I've got this really cool blue 3500, this one has the Duramax. Um, now this one is an LTZ which is probably going to be the most popular diesel, uh, $80,000 for the sticker price on that one. And then the last truck we'll go over is this High Country Diesel. Now this is going to be pretty much as expensive as it gets with a Silverado. $85,000 is the sticker price on this. Now if I went to a GMC dealer, we'd actually see a pretty similar pricing scheme with all of their trucks. Their base model truck would be about $50,000. Their sort of middle of the line package, like an elevation, would be about sixty, dollars maybe $65,000 depending on equipment. And then their more loaded up trucks, so think like a loaded up SLT would be closer to about $70,000. And then, you know, a Denali, those start at usually about $70,000. And this is with half tons by the way and then a Genali ultimate right their fully loaded half ton truck that's going to be about eighty five thousand dollars so it's quite a bit more than a fully loaded silverado because the most expensive 1500 silverado that you'll see is like maybe a seventy five thousand dollar msrp so that's like ten thousand dollars more and then with their hd trucks again they're pretty much uh, in line with the silverado pricing probably tack on about you know five thousand dollars on the price of all these silverados that i showed you and that's roughly what you see the price of most gmc's as equipped on dealer lots and so if we compare the pricing to Ram and to Ford, this is where I think things get very interesting. So if you look at a base model Ram and a base model Ford 1500, they're right around $50,000. And so all of the truck makers all have base model trucks that are about the same price. And then if you look at a fully loaded Ford half ton or a fully loaded Ram half ton, you're looking at like 85, almost $90,000, which is right in line with the GMC Sierra 1500 Denali Ultimate. But it makes the Silverado High Country look like an absolute bargain because that's like $75,000 fully loaded. And so GM at the top end is at about the same price point as Ram and Ford. And now if we dive into the middle line packages, this is where things get absolutely fascinating. So if we go back to that Silverado LT that was like $60,000, well, when I go to Ford dealerships and review XLTs, which competes against the LT, they're usually $65,000 plus. And then same thing with the Ram 1500 Bighorns, they're $60,000, $65,000 plus. And the thing about both of those trucks, the XLTs and the Bighorns, is they usually have less options than the equivalent Silverado. And so it's like the Silverado has more options and the price is also lower. And it's a similar story with the LTZ to the Laramie me and the Lariat. So most Ram Laramies that I see at dealer lots are 70,000 plus. And then with Lariats, same thing, $70,000 plus. And usually they have fewer options than the Silverado equivalent, the LTZ. Like you can get a really nice LTZ, $64,000, $65,000. So right now Chevy is undercutting Ford and Ram in price and giving more options. And so they're giving a better deal to truck customers. And so it actually makes sense as to why they're selling higher volume amounts. And same thing with the GMC Sierra. You can get a very nice Sierra SLT with heated and ventilated seats, leather interior for less than $70,000 sticker price. And heck, you can get a base model Denali 1500 for like $70,000. You can't even touch an F-150 Platinum for like less than $80,000 nowadays. And so again, what GM is offering customers with their half ton pickup trucks is basically more value per dollar. And then if we dive into the heavy duty pickup trucks, it's actually a similar situation. Again, $85,000 fully loaded. I just reviewed a Ram 3500 the other day. It was over $100,000 for the sticker price. Fully loaded Ford F350s nowadays, also over $100,000. Now, the only reason why I think that there are any um, Silverado and GMC Sierra HDs on dealer lots right now is because They've already announced the 2024 HDs, which will have a completely refreshed interior. And so a lot of people that might've purchased those trucks are no longer gonna purchase those trucks because they're waiting for the 2024s to come out. And so I think that's the only reason why there's any sort of, I guess, lower sales volume with the HD trucks is because everyone's excited for the 24 because it frankly has a lot of big updates. And the thing that's crazy is, the 2024 Silverado and GMC Sierra are still less expensive than Ram and Ford. 
So let's pull everything together to come to some sort of conclusion. So yes, GMC and Chevy are having their sales figures trend in the downward direction currently. And I think that it's for a couple of reasons. So first off, the current economic situation. This is putting downward pressure on every single automaker, especially automakers that build more expensive vehicles like pickup trucks. However, I do think there's a secondary thing that is slightly hurting GMC and Chevy. With their HD trucks, they have already announced the 2024s. And so everyone's just waiting for a 2024. And so so that is definitely putting some downward pressure on 2023 HD sales. And then when it comes to the half tons, I think that they're actually doing a pretty solid job with their pricing scheme with most of their packages. However, I do want to mention that I think that every single truck maker needs to take a step back and realize that $50,000 for a base model truck just doesn't make any sort of sense. And so I think that that's actually a big part of the reason as to why the sales figures are slightly trending downwards is because the base model truck is not as affordable as it should be. And this also applies to Ford and Ram for sure, because again, their base model trucks are $50,000. Now, the other thing to mention is a base model Silverado doesn't have any of the updates that a Silverado LT or RST has, for example. And so there's not as much incentive for someone to trade up, you know, their 2021 or 2020 Silverado to a 2022 base model because they're not necessarily getting any more. So I think that also kind of plays in part, but you know, base model trucks, $50,000. I think that's kind of ridiculous. I think realistically they need to be closer to that $40,000 price range. And if any of the truck makers did that, they would sell so many more trucks. However, despite everything that's happening in the economy and everything that's putting downward pressure on sales with the GMC Sierra and the Chevy Silverado, they are absolutely crushing it compared to Ram and Ford. And the biggest reason as to why they are crushing it is because they offer a product that's just as good, if not better than those two manufacturers. And they're offering it at a lower price point with more equipment for the price point that you're paying. So it's like the value proposition is just so much better. And so if Ford and Ram want to regain the market share they've lost to General Motors, then what they need to do is either cut their prices or they need to add more equipment to the, their current lineup of pickup trucks without increasing prices, right? They need to do something or they're just gonna continue to lose more and more market share. But despite everything that I just stated, the last thing that I find super fascinating about this whole situation is even though General Motors is crushing it with sales compared to Ford and Ram, they're still gonna be cutting production on the Silverado and the Sierra for two weeks this month because they wanna preserve pricing power. So it's weird that the truck maker that's doing the best with volume now wants to basically reduce volume as well. I don't know. This whole situation is crazy. Let me know what you guys think about this situation and let me know if you know, you're now considering buying a GMC Sierra or a Chevy Silverado because of how things are priced out option to option compared to Ford and to Ram. I'd be really interested to hear that. I'll see you.